Good morning and welcome back to the shop. On today's episode, we're going to take a look at the cornerstone of most woodworking shops, and that is the table saw. We're going to begin our instruction today going over parts of the table saw, and we're going to begin that discussion with the guides of the table saw. Every tool in the shop has a lot of strength to it, and it's very easy for the tools to rip the material right out of our hands and cause our hands to go into the blades. So every single tool in the shop is going to have at least one guide to it. If you're not using a guide, you're just asking to get hurt. So let's go through the three guides that are on the table saw. The first guide is this flat piece of uh, cast iron here. This is called the table. And on this table saw, since it's a cabinet saw, it's this whole length here. This is all the table, even this part that's melamine back here. Okay. Now what that guide does is it keeps the board from getting pushed down anywhere. So if I was just holding this board into the blade, it could easily get ripped out of my hands. So having that guide there, the table in this case, keeps that board from getting ripped out of my hands. So that's one of the guides. You're always going to use the table when you use the table saw. You always have to have it flat against the table. The second guide that we're going to take a look at is something called the rip fence or just the fence. Okay, and it slides left and right here and it's going to give us another guide. And this guide will keep the board from moving left to right. It will have to keep that board planted up against the fence. We'll talk about that when we do safety. But that's our second guide. Okay? And then our third and final guide is going to be the miter gauge here. And the miter gauge will allow us to do cross cuts. And when we're doing cross cuts, it will, the miter gauge will keep the board pressed up against the miter gauge so that it cannot move out of the way. In other words, we're keeping the board from moving up and down and from side to side. And if we can do that, we can safely make a cut on the table saw. If we can't do that, then we're in big trouble and we need to find a way to do that safely before we ever try to attempt a cut. Now, there are a couple of weird attachments that you can add to the table saw. So here's one here and there's a few other uh, various ones. But for now, we're just going to keep to the very simple three guides, okay? The table, table, fence, and miter gauge. The next parts I wanted to talk about on the table saw are all of these parts up here by the blade. This is the business end of the table saw and where all the action happens. So it's uh, important to know all the different parts up here by the blade. So we're going to start with the blade itself. That's this piece here. You've got a plate and then you've got teeth attached to the outside edge. Now table saw blades come in multiple varieties. You could get one specifically for cross cutting, one specifically for ripping, or one that will do a combination of both. Uh, if you want it to cut very well in that particular application, you're going to want a specialty blade. But in general, these combination blades work very well for pretty much everything you're going to do. Uh, they also have some specialty blades like a dado blade that will cut a real fat groove into something. And they also have blades uh, made for man-made materials like melamine. The next part I wanted to talk about is this part here. It's red on this table saw indicating that you should keep your hands away from it, which is a very good practice. This is called the throat plate. And the throat plate is a removable piece on your table saw that allows you to adjust the opening in case you want to do a very tight cut or in case you have a very fat cut on it like on a dado blade then you would use a different throat plate so they're they're made to be replaceable the next piece i wanted to talk about is this piece here it's called the splitter it's a solid piece of steel that sits behind the blade on these older saws it's going to have something only called the splitter on the newer saws there's a version called a riving knife and it does the same thing, it just does it a little bit better. So if you're using the um, blade guard, you're probably gonna have this splitter on here, and if you need to take the blade um, guard off, you're probably gonna use a, re a riving knife. We're gonna encounter these pieces here, and these are anti-kickback poles. We'll talk about those when we get to safety as well, but these are these little arms with spikes on them. Those are called anti-kickback pawls, P-A-W-L-S. That's gonna bring us to the last piece up here I wanted to talk about, and that is this plastic piece here. This is called the blade guard. 
and it just keeps hands from going into the blade. The next part of the table saw I wanted to discuss is all the adjustable parts of the table saw. So there's very few adjustments you can make on the table saw and they're relatively easy to learn. The real difficulty of using the table saw resides in how do I use everything safely. So let's take a look at the first one here. The first adjustment we can make is on this miter gauge. Miter gauge is going to slide back and forth and if we want to make a 90 degree cut on it we'll just leave everything the way it is. Right now it's set to zero degrees, which will give me a perfect 90 degree cut, okay? If I wanted to adjust that, I could. On most of them, you're gonna loosen up this handle. You'll just unscrew it a little. And some of them have a stop on them that prevents the miter gauge from turning. So in this case, I have to pull that out and that will allow this gauge to rotate back and forth. This puts in hard stops and you'll set those for a few different degrees and like this one it goes right back to 90 so that it's perfectly in position every single time. That's the first adjustment I wanted to talk about. That's the miter gauge and you can swing it back and forth to adjust the angle of your cross cut. The second adjustment you can make on your table saw is to adjust this fence here. Remember this is called the rip fence or the fence and it can be adjusted left to right to vary the width of the cut that you're going to make. It's a very simple adjustment. There's a handle on the end of it. You lift the handle up and now it can slide freely back and forth and when you get it set where you want you just lock the handle down in place and the fence will be stuck there so that it cannot move and will give you a nice rigid anchor point as a guide. Some other adjustments you're going to find on a table saw include the two hand wheels. There's going to be one in the front right there and one on the side right there. I'll show you that in a little bit greater detail. So typically this hand wheel in the front is going to adjust the height of the blade. And I'll go ahead and do that now so you can see. There's a lock on the front. You loosen the lock, that will allow you to turn the hand wheel. When I crank this hand wheel, it's going to raise the blade up in height. So we typically want that blade to be just over our workpiece. This will allow us to alter that height so that if we're cutting a thin board, we can put it at the right height, or if we're adjusting a thick board, we could put it at the right height. In addition to this front hand wheel, there's also the hand wheel on the side and that hand wheel is right here. It operates the same exact way. There's a lock on the front of it. I just undo the lock. I just loosen it. It's a screw. And now I can swing this hand wheel one way or the other. If you keep your eye on the blade, what you'll notice is the whole blade will pivot over. It will tilt. And in this case, this saw tilts to the left. That's typically thought of as being the safer direction for the blade to tilt. Since most of the work that you do on the table saw is on this side, having the edge of the blade tilt away from you so that the teeth are farther away is typically thought of as safer. So this would be a left tilt saw. And as long as I'm working over here, again, that's considered safer. So this wheel on the side here will tilt the blade and there's a little gauge on the front that reads zero to 45 degree angles. The next parts of the table saw that I wanted to focus on are all the parts by the blade. First one is going to be the blade itself. It's got the plate and then each of the teeth on it. Table saw blades come in different varieties. You can get ones for rip cutting, ones for cross cutting, and ones for combination of the two. And then they make a few specialty blades like dado blades and blades that cut um, man-made materials like melamine as well. So we've got the blade and the teeth. We've got the throat plate, which is this removable portion here. Uh, those could be changed out. Usually you're going to want a zero clearance one. That'll give you a nice tight cut. That will conclude the most common adjustments made to the table saw.